So today let's ponder applications of friction, starting with walking, which we've talked about a little bit in class. When you are walking, you set a foot down, you move your body, and then you pick the foot up. That foot that you set down doesn't slide across the floor, and if there's no sliding motion, that means that is a static frictional force that you use when you are walking. Now, that may not seem logical because when you're dealing with kinetic friction, you're dealing with an object in motion, but that motion is a sliding motion. Your foot does not slide. You don't ice skate across the floor. You don't slide. You pick your feet up, and they're not in a sliding motion. So then when you are walking, it is static friction, and when you take each step horizontally, you push backwards on the floor. Now, the force that we're interested in is the floor, force that the floor applies back to you. Newton's third law, that frictional force or the force on you from the floor is in that forward direction. And so friction acts in the same direction you are walking and it is a static frictional force. Now, let's ponder driving. When you're driving, there are two different things that your tires can do. They can either roll or they can skid. Thinking back to what we said just a minute ago right here, static frictional forces, there's no sliding motion. Kinetic frictional forces, there is a sliding motion. Imagine this tire to be your car tire. So, as shown in the picture, your car is going that way, so your tire is moving like that, okay? over towards the right side. As your tire lays down, the section of your tire that lays down, it doesn't slide, it doesn't go anywhere, it lays down and picks up, almost like when you're walking and you're taking a step, you set your foot down and you move. So then when your tire is moving, when your car is moving, that is a static frictional force. In order for you to have a kinetic frictional force, your tire would have to be doing this, it would have to be skidding. Well, when your tires are skidding, this is a sliding motion. And so when your tires are skidding, you are using kinetic frictional forces. When your tires are rolling, each point on the tire sets down on the road. It doesn't slide left or right, the tire rotates some and then that point picks back up. And so when your tire is rolling, there is no sliding motion. You're not skidding. And so then you are using static friction. That's something you have to think about. Your car is going 50 miles an hour down the road, but the point of your tire that's in contact with the road is not moving. It's at rest relative to the, mo the road, so you are using that static frictional force. Now, the direction of that static frictional force is really going to depend on what you're doing, whether you're at rest, whether you're accelerating, whether you're decelerating, what the state of the car's motion is. So if we extend a little bit into various different motions, think in terms of what direction you need extra newtons. When you are decelerating or skinning, then your car is slowing down. And if it's slowing down, you need extra newtons opposite to the direction of the motion. So you need extra newtons backwards. When you apply the brakes, that causes an interaction between the tires and the road, which results in a frictional force acting on your tires in that backwards direction. When you accelerate your car, you need extra forward Newtons. When you apply the gas pedal, that causes the tires to tend to spin faster and push backwards on the road, just like walking, and the road pushes forward. So those extra newtons come from that frictional force, which is in a forward direction. 
When you're driving at a constant velocity, you don't need any extra forward Newtons, nor do you need any extra backwards Newtons, and therefore you really are not using frictional force. So when you're driving at a constant velocity, object in motion tends to stay in motion. The frictional force is very small or nearly zero. So you don't have any friction there. It's just like coasting on a bicycle. You don't have to pedal. There is no friction or very little friction when you're moving at a constant velocity. So let's think about the frictional forces now in terms of the graph. Kinetic friction, our section right here. You are using those frictional forces only when your car is skidding, when those tires are sliding. It's important to note, as we've pointed out before, that there's a drop between your maximum static that occurs on the graph before you get to kinetic. So then there are less frictional forces when you are skidding, which means you have less traction. Let's talk about the static part. The static part of the graph is this entire section. So if we think about what your car is doing, when you're down here at the bottom, you are basically traveling at a constant velocity where you are using very little frictional force. When you apply the brakes, when you step on the gas pedal, then your tires are pushing on the road. Newton's third law, the road is pushing back by means of the frictional force. So then up here at the top, at the peak, this would be maximum braking or maximum acceleration. So then when you are driving, you are changing, you are varying the amount of friction depending on how you press on the gas pedal, how you press on the brake, going from low to high if you're going at a constant velocity on the low side, and then the high side when you are maximum braking or maximum acceleration. An important point to realize is your brake pedal and your gas pedal do not cause the car to decelerate and accelerate. If your brake pedal did cause the car to stop, it would not matter what surface you were on. When you hit that brake pedal, you would stop, but that's not true. When you hit the brake pedal on pavement, your car stops. When you hit the brake pedal on ice, your car does not stop. So your brake pedal does not make the car stop. But what it does is it moves you from the lower frictional forces of constant velocity to the higher frictional forces at maximum braking. And it's that external force of friction that causes your car to slow down. The same way when you hit the gas pedal, that pushes your tires to spin faster, which causes them to push on the road, and your car accelerates only because the road pushes back with a frictional force, and that forward frictional force causes your car to accelerate. Now, let's consider applications of these different frictional forces. Keep in mind, whenever you have static friction, which is on all of the constant velocity, accelerating and decelerating, that's when your frictional forces are higher. On the graph, that was the peak. Once you go into skidding, this is the lowest frictional force value because it drops down once your tires start to slide. So it's in your best interest using friction, having the best traction, to always keep your tires rolling. So use your imagination a little bit. Here's your car. You're driving to school, a little bit snowy, a little bit rainy. You traveling down the road 50 miles an hour and ahead of you you see a patch of ice in the road and you don't want to lose control of your car so how do you drive well think about the friction think about what your tires are doing if you have tires on pavement that's a pretty high coefficient of friction you've got good texture to the pavement and to your tires and you have a lot of friction ice you have a very low coefficient of friction, so there's very little friction. So then you wanna drive in a way that you don't need very much friction. And that would be at a constant velocity. So if you're driving up icy roads, 
What's in your best interest is to maintain a constant velocity. Don't push on the brake pedal. Don't push on the gas pedal. Literally, you just coast right across that icy patch and you're not using much friction when you're at a constant velocity. Doesn't matter that ice doesn't have that much friction. You are still fine and you maintain control of the car. So driving across ice, maintain a constant velocity. Don't try to speed up, don't try to slow down, don't try to turn because all of those require you to use frictional forces and ice doesn't have that much friction. Now, let's suppose that you lost control. So you're going like this, this is the road, except your car has fishtailed and now you are sliding sideways at 50 miles an hour down the road and you need to regain control of your car. Well, in driver's ed class, they may have taught you to turn the steering wheel into the direction the car is sliding. So if we turn the steering wheel this way, then our sliding car goes from this to this. Now, what I want you to notice is what the tires are doing. When the car is like this, the tires are sliding. You're using kinetic friction, which is the lower friction. You can't steer, you can't control the car. As soon as you turn the steering wheel into the direction of the slide, notice what happens. The wheels start to roll, and as soon as the wheels are rolling, you get access to the higher static frictional force. You can apply the brakes, you can apply the gas pedal, you can turn, you have better traction, which is better friction. So if you're sliding, if you fishtail, always turn the steering wheel into the direction the vehicle is traveling to get those wheels rolling. Anytime you are driving, you want the tires always rolling to be able to access the higher frictional force values. Now, suppose that you're driving along now and you hit a large puddle of water. Well, a large puddle of water, you begin to hydroplane. Hydroplaning is basically when your car tires are not in contact with pavement anymore, but you're actually floating your car on top of a layer of water. And tires on water have a very low coefficient of friction. So then if you want to regain control of your car, the best thing you can do is get your car to sink. You want it back on the pavement. Well, to get your car to sink, you want to gradually slow it down. Don't apply the brakes, don't apply the gas. Coast, let the air resistance slow you down until your car sinks back down and you have tires on pavement and then you have a higher frictional force and you can regain control of the car. Most car tires, have, and I don't know that our, tie truck, tire, our toy truck has much, but you have treads on your tires. And those treads are on tires to be able to have channels for the water to go in, okay? That's why you have tread, is for water on road, snow on road, sand, dirt on road. You need tread for those situations. If you did not drive anywhere that there was rain, the road was always dry, it never snowed, there was never dirt, then you could have a tire on your car, much like this tire. This is a racing tire, and it has no tread on it at all, okay? Um, professional racing. They never run races when the track is wet. If they did, the cars would be sliding all over the place. They only race when the top track is dry and the tires have no tread on them because this increased surface area actually builds up a lot of heat when the cars are driving and that heat melts some of the outside rubber of the tires, which makes them very sticky, which gives you an increased coefficient of friction and that higher coefficient of friction gives higher frictional forces better traction, they can accelerate, decelerate, take corners faster. On the flip side, with that melting of the tires, these tires wear out very quickly. This tire was run for, I believe, about 42 miles on the Kentucky Speedway, and there are threads already showing through it. That's why racers have to pull into the pit stop and have their tires changed often because they literally wear out the tires that fast because they are melting the surface of the tires when they are racing.
Now, another application related to all of this is anti-lock brakes or ABS. Cars today, it is standard to have anti-lock brakes. And what anti-lock brakes do is they keep your tires using static friction. They don't allow your tires to lock up and skid. They electronically pulse the brakes to be able to keep those tires always rotating so you can access those higher static frictional force values. Potter Physics.